Welcome to this introduction to Fractal Architect X. Fractal Architect X is the kid brother of Fractal Architect 5. And here are some fractals I've made with this version. Um, Fractal Architect X lacks a lot of features that Fractal Architect 5 has, but it's made to be uh, compatible to the app Apophysis. And Apophysis don't have a uh, the ability to run natively on Mac OS, but Fractal Architect does, and it has some tricks up its sleeve that Apophysis don't have. So let's take a look at what we, what we have here. Fractal Architect X misses a lot of the more advanced features on Fractal Architect 5, like the Lua scripting and the advanced random generation. It has a much more basic random generation, just one button actually, and it makes a bunch of random fractals based on the shoes and variation set. One thing that a, a Fractal Architect X has that is also in Fractal Architect 5 is the very easy and powerful layer system. Uh, you just select two frames and you hit the space bar and you can see what those layers Will look like together and you can test and try out different combinations uh, of two or more fractals and it's very easy to find stuff that looks really good together and um, let's make a section here with three fractals When you find something that you like, uh, you can open them, the layers in a, a preview window with a simple menu command like this. Create layered fractals from selected and it opens those layers in a preview window. And if you click this L button here, you get a drawer with all your layers. You got buttons to hide them if you want to focus on just one layer, and uh, you got buttons to decide what layers will be edited by the tools in the toolbox. If you use the tools in the toolbox without making a selection, they are all selected by default. And if I zoom out like this, you can see that everything gets zoomed out, all the layers are affected if I rotate them all the layers rotate. But if I decide, let's see in here which layer we should work on. I think that one. So we uncheck the, all, all the other layers from editing. Now when we use the same tools you will see that it only rotates the selected layer. The preview lags a little because they are a lot of stuff for a computer to compute. But this makes it very simple and easy to compose your images. Let's close that one. When you work with Fractal Architect X, you can have, work in two ways. You can take one of these um, um, random generated fractals and you can uh, edit it to your heart's content. Or you can make a new blank fractal. And it comes with two transforms and they are empty so you have to fill them with something. Let's see if we take a Julia on this one, number one. And we can take something else here on the second transform. Let's see what should we choose. How about a butterfly? And this works just as Apophysis does, so 
uh, J Wi-Fi or Chaotica or any of these apps. Now we have a butterfly here. And um, you can have pre and post groups. You can play with these triangles that change the settings for the that transform and find some shapes that you like just like in any other fractal generation app let's make a new transform and we get rid of the linear set that to not 10 but 0 And let's choose a subflame. I just write sub and I get the subflame. That's the fastest way to find transforms if you know what it, you want. A subflame must be loaded with something, so we must look for a, something that you we can use as a shape, because that's what subflames do. They take another fractal and use it as a shape. Uh, we want something simple because that usually works best. We copy that frame and we go here and we paste it. Uh, then we have to tweak it a bit to make it look good. We use the post uh, tab to do that. Try to shrink it. Shrink it a lot. I can use these arrows to move it about. I can of course zoom in to make it bigger, but if I want to move it a long distance, it's better to use these arrows here. If you click the little arrow button uh, at the side of these buttons, you get sliders, quick look sliders that you can use. Now it starts to look Good, let's play with the weight too. I'm no, not lowering it, that's not very good. Yeah, raise the weight, that's better. Make it an even number, it's easier. I don't like to have a lot of digits, it's better to have even numbers. Just looks more tidy, I think. Like that. So, what can we do more to this fractal? I can play with the butterfly weight a bit more. If we lower the weight, those branches there shrinks. We want the branches, they look good. And we can play with the, with the colors. We enter one at color speed and trying to find a new color index that will make it more interesting. Uh, I think that will do for now. We'll work more on the colors later. Let's zoom out. 200 is the default and if you zoom in, make it bigger, you will usually get more noisy fractals so it's better to zoom in using a final transform actually if you make the final transform weight bigger it zooms in without so much quality loss but now we want to zoom out but of course we want to see what happens to the shape when we add a hyper tile get rid of the linear and we find the hypertile, type hype, and that's the hypertile. We choose hypertile 2 for this one. And we can use both pre and post to uh, define the shapes. They will act a little bit different. Let's see what's best for this fractal. Well, that looks rather nice, I think. 
Let's try, we reset it and we try post. As you see there, yes, you, you get a little different uh, effect in using post. Most often I use post, but I think in this case I will choose to use the pre tab. That look better. Something like this, make it a little bigger to see what happens. Oh yes, that looks rather nice. Mm -hmm. So what can we do more? We can add a final transform. And both sub-flames that we used before and the hypertiles can be used as final transform. And all the other variations, of course. But hypertiles are very effective to use as final transforms. Let's try that. Take uh, hypertile 2 again. And when we move this triangle around now, you split up the fractal in three parts. Well, it's, they are the same as the whole fractal, but when you move them somewhere in the middle you get quite interesting effects there. I think that looks rather good. Uh, let's see. We try to add a E Julia too as a second final transform. Because uh, just uh, like in Fractal Architect 5 you can have more than one final transform. Yeah, that looks that looks nice. Trim it down a bit. Yeah. Like that. Okay. So, this is what we have arrived at. But let's work on those colors. Here, here in the color editor you can do a lot of things. You can rotate the colors to find something interesting and that can change the appearance of the fractal quite drastically because you highlight different areas of the fractal. Different shapes get highlighted. That looks rather nice. Uh, we can also design up but let's first let's save this one so we have it and you can design your own color scheme using uh, let's say 20 colors 22 colors and I want it mostly purple and I want some random colors thrown in there as well so I get mostly purple here and got that orange that uh, as a random color. I can try to move them around. Uh, that's nice. Yeah. Let's see. I can also select a color and I can move that color around using the arrow keys. That's a good way to isolate uh, different shapes and find where they are in the color scheme that you have selected. Let's see, there we have it. I'll go back to that. There. Uh, I think I want to change the color. What happens if we make it yellow? Oh, that's nice too. Or bright blue. Which one is best? Bright blue is best. Let's keep that one and save that too so we can compare. This is the first saved color set and this is the second. And I think that is better. So we apply that to previous and others with this button. And uh, yeah, close this color editor. So 
This looks rather nice, and we have made this without any fancy Lua scripts or random fractal uh, stuff. And this is the best way actually to work with this app, this free app. And we can render this at any size because there are no size limits when it comes to rendering. And if we want to continue to grow when we have explored this, you have two subscription options. Uh, the silver subscription give you the same features as Fractal Architect 5. You can have a monthly subscription or you can have a yearly subscription. You also get access, access to early features from Fractal Architect 6 when they become available. The gold subscription give you all that plus GPU rendering and the animation sequencer. If you don't like subscription, you can buy Fractal Architect 5 and keep it forever and you don't have to pay anything if you don't want the GPU rendering because the GPU rendering will always be on a subscription because it's very hard and costly to make apps that support GPU rendering because every generation of Macs have their own special GPU and if we want to guarantee that it will work, the GPU rendering will work on every Mac, we have to buy a lot of test Macs and it's not possible to do that because it's too expensive. So the GPU rendering will be on subscription and you can test if the GPU rendering works on your computer before you subscribe. Uh, also, when you subscribe, both the silver subscription and the gold subscription, you get a free trial period, so you can check it out. Yeah. That way you get plenty of time to test it, that it really works. And this works, as you can see. So, I want to buy this subscription, and I have to confirm that I want to buy it. I just wait a little bit, and... There, you are all set, and I close that, and I close the store. Take a look at those buttons now. You can see, now we have all the buttons. We have the variance editor, the super variance editor. We have the stash, we didn't have that before. And we can make a lot of changes. In one go. That's the beauty of the variance editor. You can change a lot of parameters at the same time. That changes that will take a lot of time to do by hand. And um, you find combinations that you wouldn't think of yourself many times. So you just change the colors here. It's a fast way to find new colors. So that's it. Um, I hope you have found this video useful and that it has inspired you to check out Fractal Architect X. It's free on the Mac App Store and you can easily upgrade it to a Fractal Architect 5 with in-app subscriptions. If you want to see more tutorials like this, uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel and uh, I see you next time. Thank you.